things that we've almost eradicated or, or have eradicated in the domestic cattle herds are still um, kind of embedded in some of the wood bison herds and it just threatens the long-term survival of that species in the wild. One of the issues when you have a population threatened with disease um, or other health-related issues is how do you hold on to that genetic material and how do you preserve it long-term? We um, did IVF, in vitro fertilization, and they froze the embryos using a fairly novel technique. Once the embryos were frozen, they came on an Air Canada flight to Toronto Zoo. We thawed the embryos and we did the transfers into uh, four of our females here. I, I must admit, I checked the records 10 times to make sure it was the right calf from the right embryo transfer and not that we had, um, that it was just an artificial insemination calf. So it, it was a good day all, all around for the whole team. Can we preserve genetic material long term and not only freeze it, but can it actually be used and integrated? Um, can we move genetics from the wild into captivity and back again? And can it all be stored in case there is um, a natural disaster or some type of epidemic? You always have the resources available to you. So it's long term preservation in many senses that you have the insurance material available to you, that you're able to work with populations globally instead of regionally and that you're able to move without barriers, the wild captivity, etc. And it all becomes one. <laughs>